Ladies and gentlemen, there's a fascinating battle brewing for the next generation of processors from both AMD and Intel. There's a very good possibility that we're on the cusp of a huge performance uplift, not just in terms of the raw performance itself, but also energy efficiency, which arguably is just as important. With Arrow Lake, Meteor Lake, and Zen 5 on the horizon, I've put out this video where we're going to be talking about all of that stuff. That is, after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I want to start things out with Intel because there is a tweet actually that really made me want to make this video and it's from Raichu on Twitter. They've had a pretty good track record, particularly when it comes to Intel stuff. So let's read out what they've said and then I can add to that hopefully with my own information. The target for Meteor is to realize a 1.5 times efficiency compared to Raptor Lake when it has the same performance. That's the same core processor performance and energy efficient cores. They also followed up with about the iGPU. I think it will maybe reach two times performance levels. That's 128 execution units at 2 gigahertz versus 96 execution units. Now, to be clear, my own understanding so far is that Meteor Lake is not... I repeat, not going to launch on desktop. Of course, Meteor Lake will launch, but it won't be for, like, enthusiasts. Instead, it will be more for, like, you know, well, basically the Dells of the world and uh, companies which, which want to create, like, laptops, all-in-ones, that type of thing. So... Essentially, what we're going to get, of course, is the Raptor like refresh, and I don't really have much more to add about that. There's not a huge change, and not like there's a massive change to like you know the integer units or floating point units, or that they've done a total redesign of the cores or any of that stuff. It's essentially the same thing as what we've got previously, but with some tweaks here and there. So it's going to be interesting to see what they actually manage to wrangle out of it, especially with, uh, of course, AMD's Vcash Zen 4s on the horizon. But yeah, for those of you who are hoping for Meteor Lake, well, no, you're going to have to wait to Arrow Lake. In the spirit of Meteor Lake, though, let's talk about a couple of the things regarding it. So again, this is not coming out to desktop, to my understanding, and others have said the same thing. So we have six performance cores, these are Redwood, and 16 energy efficient cores known as Crestmont. I was told last year, this is late last year, um, that we're looking at 15 to 20% gain on average over Raptor Lake. I believe this is an all core figure. Performance, score, uh, performance cores, excuse me, are around 15% gain. However, energy efficient cores are a little more, perhaps around 25%. There is a potential for some clock frequency regression but it's too early to know about clocks right now. Honestly, I'm perhaps a little skeptical about these IPC figures because, well, for one, when it comes to IPC, how are they actually measuring it? That's, you know, a big topic in and of itself. Are we talking Cinebench run? Are we talking Spec View Perf? Are we talking like integer? Are we talking floating point? Are we talking heavy IVX? Are we talking single thread, multi thread? You get the idea. It becomes a very complicated topic when we're talking about IPC. But nevertheless, those are the figures that I was given so far. Um, the goal is basically energy efficiency, and as a bonus, my source also told me that they suspect Meteor Lake um, iGPU will also probably outperform Phoenix. Now, I think Strix Point is going to be a lot faster, but Strix Point, of course, is going to come later, and it's always with this stuff, it depends on timing. It's good, though. It's amazing that both AMD and Intel are improving their iGPUs, because at the end of the day, it means that if you're buying let's say a laptop or you don't need like a whole crap ton of graphics performance you don't need to have like a discrete gpu like a gtx 16 series or what have you instead your apu can be absolutely enough and i think that's always a good thing now things get much more interesting with arrow lake so arrow lake is going to be the successor of course to meteor lake but unlike meteor lake it will be coming to desktop 
Now, what becomes very curious about Arrow Lake, not just the fact that, well, it actually is going to be something that desktop users can be excited about, but when it comes to the core count. So there were a lot of conflicting rumors concerning the core count. Um, early on, I stated that I was hearing up to 32 cores, but then there were some updates to say, maybe this was no longer happening and perhaps Intel were actually only going to release 16 cores. This is for the energy efficient um, cores, by the way, not the high performance cores. So let's talk more about this, shall we? Now I was provided some evidence and I cannot show it in the video, unfortunately, because it's a photo and I just don't want it to be, you know, traceable and all that stuff and get anyone into trouble. But basically it does seem to highlight the reasons for the um, energy efficient cores being cut. So let's go through the bullet points. Now, Meteor Lake and Arrow Lake S feature the same package, socket and pin layout, and there will be a motherboard intercompatibility. So basically speaking, again, this is not necessarily going to help us as enthusiasts, but if you are, for example, the Aces of the world, Lenovo's, that type of thing, this is going to be something that perhaps you would care about more. There are eight performance cores. They are Lion Cove. We'll talk more about the performance in a moment. And 16 energy efficient cores. These are known as Skymont. So initially, Arrow Lake S had an 8 plus 32 Halo core uh, skew, but it's now cut down to 8 plus 16 to, quote, simplify power delivery. Um, there's no solid clock frequency info whatsoever yet. It's way too early. However, what I was told is that IPC gains seem pretty big. We're potentially seeing a 45% IPC gain over Older Lake. I was also told that the e courts are extremely impressive, but right now there are precious few details, so I wouldn't really hold too much um, insight into that. I just, I'm just told that they're really good. IPC gains, though, are likely conservative. And as I said, the problem with IPC is that often you're just not given information on how it was achieved. How were they testing those benchmarks? Is it even a similar configuration? I will say though, I do think Intel are gonna do quite well in the future. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see how Intel's like, you know, kind of CPU progression continues. I think it's fair to say that for a while there, they were getting absolutely just raked over the coals by AMD not only in terms of core counts but energy efficiency and everything else it was just it was just becoming kind of a bloodbath this is not to say that amd are doing poorly at the moment far from it i think zen 4 has a lot of potential going forward to show what amd are going to evolve the architecture into but i would say that it's a very interesting um dynamic between amd and intel so let's talk more about amd i've got a couple of small updates to amd and i've talked a lot about zen 5 previously but these are just a few small updates that i've been given to zen 5 so firstly i'm almost positive at this stage that the zen 5 ccx is utilizing only eight cores initially i've been told it could be up to 16 but i think that this is either misinformation something they tested internally and never designed or so it was never intended to release or whatever but one of the big reasons behind this and a couple of very good sources have told me this is because of infinity fabric xgmi links basically they just couldn't feed all of the cores with enough data i'm vastly simplifying it but just for the tldr you can just think of it like that ipc gains though i've heard multiple figures i think 1t these are but i've heard 22 to 30 percent which is quite quite a wide gap i'm assuming these are targets rather than something that's being achieved internally right now uh, again with, I, with IPC gains, I don't trust them until they get much closer to launch, but that's what I was told so far. I'm also told that there's larger caches, a wider design, particularly the coders, to better match the execution units. L1, L2, and L3 seem to have had bigger changes. L1 cache seems to be significantly larger, and I'm also told by one to two sources that the L2 cache is unified across the CCX. Now, I've also been told some interesting stuff for L3. Uh, a couple of different things. So one source is insisting that this is correct, that an L3 is basically shared. You can think of it as kind of like an MCD with the CCXs having like, I don't know, kind of communication to it. Whereas another source told me that is incorrect and that instead L3 is pretty much roughly the same as it is now, but there's an MCD which is basically acting like a last level cache uh, it's basically a shared L4 cache, and this is going to be 
um, perhaps for something more like an APU. Honestly, both of these have their positives, negatives, and flaws, and I don't know if either of them is true. It's possible that a design was tested internally at AMD and then cancelled. This happens all of the time where they're like, does this work? And then they kind of do stimulations, they do internal testing, and it's just not worth it either for power reasons or for yields or for you know cost or whatever. So this is potentially something they've tested. And then obviously it just doesn't end up being something that makes the cut for that particular processor or it's something for like a particular halo skew or a server or something like that now as for granite ridge also known as am5 platform again 16 cores seems to be likely so 16 cores 32 threads there's no changes to the smt structure so it's still two threads per core essentially honestly i think this makes a lot of sense um given the core counts for intel going forward given the core counts for amd going forward i think it makes an awful lot of sense like how much like energy like e-core spam are you going to do for intel there's like you know kind of diminishing returns and the same thing for amd do you really need on the am5 platform like 24 or 40 oh sorry i was about to say 42 cores that would be really odd i meant to say 32 of course like does it make sense for AMD to do this? Now, I, I suspect that, again, there could be internal testing which is done, which is never designed to see the light of day. And that's what I was told initially, that there were tests for higher core count variants, but I don't think it was ever intended to be released. And I think that there's a lot of reasons for this. You know, I won't go through all of them here, but one is just the viability of it from a technical point of view, as I mentioned earlier, like the HDMI ports and just, you know, actually feeding the cores themselves, but ignoring the technical stuff, like ignoring the size of the actual cores and the space on the die and the power consumption, the heat and actually feeding the cores. Like, let's just take that from out of the window and say that we have a solution, we can click our fingers and there's a magical pixel that comes down and goes yep it's gonna work let's just assume for sake of argument you can do that why would they um and this is kind of the thing like one of the sources that told me about the higher core counts initially they were pretty certain of it and again they'd been really accurate with a lot of stuff and i you have to kind of give some people the benefit of the doubt like if they've given you great info in the past but when i started to do more digging i became more more convinced that it was probably internal testing only and it seems to me like you know honestly amd just don't need to do it um because one it's just not something i think that the mainstream is going to necessarily need or support and it also somewhat cuts the legs off of things like thread ripper now i know that thread ripper is not exactly selling as many units as am5 but yeah it just i think 16 for the mainstream is going to be absolutely more than enough it's going to be very interesting though to see how all of this plays out and one final thing for this video and that concerns the rtx 4070 so you may recall that of course amd are facing a lot of pressure at the moment from nvidia as nvidia now starting to fill out its various uh lower or sorry i say mid-range skews with the rtx 4070 ti launching and now of course we're expecting the 4060 and 4070 series recently i leaked the photos of the rtx 4070 or rather the box of the 4070 and i said that it's probably going to be coming uh early second half of this year and this seems to be confirmed now by videocards.com who have basically stated that yup we're going to see the launch of this in april this makes sense given NVIDIA themselves are hosting an event in March. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of this shapes up. Again, to repeat myself on what I've said in a previous video, I think the MSRP targets are 599 to 649 US dollars. However, I don't really have a lot of confidence in pricing until much closer to launch. Um, because, well, prices can change literally the last minute. Um, and I would also say that the performance targets that I've heard, I'm reasonably confident in. You can probably do some predictions yourself anyway to say that these are pretty accurate, but it's roughly the RTX 3080 to 3080 Ti levels of performance, depending on the resolution, if you've got ray tracing enabled, the game engine, and all of that other stuff. With that said, though, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.